Hey everyone, I want to start this video off with a massive thank you to everyone who has subscribed. It truly means a lot, and by looking at the numbers uh, per video, I can tell that more and more are subscribing beyond that initial giveaway video, where I asked the audience to get the video to uh, 500 likes, sorry, and get my channel to 1500 subscribers, um, to give away the two full price base value games. Whether people choose to stay beyond the giveaway, I don't know. Um, I would hope so, and I hope that people that do enjoy the content do stay, but if not, whatever, that's all good. Um, I understand with the constant notifications and all that stuff being thrown in your face, I'll never ask you in a YouTuber way to like and subscribe and smash that bell, like, whatever button icon thing. Um, if this hurts Windeck Tech as a channel, that's fine. I fundamentally believe that the Tech Steam Deck handheld section on YouTube has gotten a little bit stale. Um, there are obvious standouts such as Cryobite, The Fox, Fan the Deck, Nerd Nest, Retro Game Core, uh, Taki Udon, and Deck, uh, sorry, Deckverse, Teemo from Deckverse. And there's more, there's many more as well. Um, but there's a lot that have just kind of seen, like I'm seeing channels, they got big numbers maybe during the height of the Steam Deck, or the handheld kind of craze, and then they've fallen off in content that they're putting out. There just doesn't seem to be as much patch in behind these channels as there once was. And that's why I've made a promise to myself, and by extension the audience, that I would not allow myself to fall into the same rut putting out just overhead video views of gameplay on the handheld or whatever happens to be the focus of that video, and no commentary, nothing. I promise to take care and effort into fact checking, testing, reviewing, editing, and when accepting product sponsors and uh, sponsorships if they ever happen, things like that. Um, if I think that I don't have anything to add to it, uh, either commentary-wise or value or whatever, or I feel it's to the detriment of the channel, I will not accept uh, the sponsored product. Again, whether this hurts me or not, that's fine. Uh, it doesn't really matter to me, to be honest. Uh, thank you again for supporting the channel and getting us very quick, uh, very quickly, sorry, above and beyond the thousand subscriber mark. I hope in the future that I am able to work in brand deals to maybe sponsor these types of giveaways or something like that. Uh, whether it's maybe like their product that they have or if they sponsor like a game giveaway or something. Uh, just something to give back to the community, always, hopefully. And while still maintaining my integrity and not allowing those sponsorships to cloud my judgment. And I've said this before though, that it's just a pipe dream. And all I ever really hope for with this channel, monetarily speaking, sorry. Um, but yeah, thanks everyone. Is the ASUS ROG Ally future-proof? No, because nothing is ever future-proof. Whether you have the ASUS ROG Ally, 4090, PS5, or whatever, they'll always become obsolete no matter what. In terms of specs, the Ally has a Z1 Extreme processor, which could boost up to 5.1 GHz and 2.7 GHz for the GPU, or sorry, CPU and GPU, respectively, uh, with a TDP range of 7 to 30 watts. Contains 16 GB of LPDDR5 memory, running at 6400 mega transfers. And then comparing this to the world's most popular handheld, the Steam Deck, it has the CPU and GPU clocks at 3.5 GHz and 1.6 GHz, respectively and 16 gigabytes of LPDDR5 memory running at 5,500 megatransfers, as well as a TDP range up to 15 watts. Storage and screen comparisons aside, focusing just on the core components of the Steam Deck and the ASUS ROG Ally, the Steam Deck is woefully underpowered compared to the Ally. As well as having four extra cores to work with in the CPU, these limitations can be felt on many recently released CPU bound games such as Jedi Survivor and Hogwarts Legacy. Jedi Survivor is downright unplayable on the Steam Deck, and Hogwarts Legacy without outside intervention is a stutterfest. The only concern for the ally is when it comes to the amount of system memory. With only 16GB of RAM, we are left with 12GB of system memory as, def as the default UMA frame buffer is 4GB. Uh, quickly, for 1080p gaming, 16 gigabytes of RAM is becoming the minimum recommended requirements. I had played Forza for, uh, Horizon 5, sorry, um, as well as I've seen in the comments as well, people have been mentioning, uh, but it gave me a low system memory error running default 1080p settings, even with FSR turned on. Um, other games that have these issues would be Resident Evil 4 maxed out with ray tracing turned on. If you run out of video memory, the game will crash. I'm sure this will happen on the Ally. I haven't tried it myself yet, but once you run out of memory, if you got ray tracing on or in general, the game will crash on you. Um, however, games like Jedi Survivor are able to be played on the ROG Ally, unlike the Steam Deck. In today's video, I'm going to be focusing on the Ally's performance in Fortnite. 
Running various setting combinations, this will hopefully give us some insight into the future of gaming on the Ally. Fortnite is based on the latest Unreal Engine 5.1 uh, game engine, and seeing as every developer and their mother is switching over to it and throwing their own in-house engines out the window, we should be able to see how the Ally will hold up as games get released over the next couple of years. Um, obviously taking into account for that Yes, games will be released that are more demanding than Fortnite, but I would say that Fortnite can be pretty demanding with the settings cranked because of the Nanite, the Lumen GI, and the Lumen uh, Reflections as well. That's ray tracing. So they have the software ray tracing, which is what we'll be focusing on in this video. Um, and they also have hardware ray tracing as an enable uh, toggle in the options there. So if you have a hardware ray traced card, you can get better performance or better uh better uh <clears throat> better gi better reflections sorry you'll get worse performance for turning that option on sorry let me clarify that uh so anyway so we'll just be focusing on like lumen gi and like kind of the next gen features and tricks and whatever and see what kind of performance we can get all right getting into the results i'll go through it kind of sort of quickly ish um, so again, these results are not supposed to be like tweaked to like best performance or best like whatever. It's just kind of testing out the Unreal Engine. So setting it straight out of the box, auto settings, it said it's a bit, uh, all settings high with Nanite and the Lumen features turned off. So with that running 1080p and TSR on auto, that sets it where it automatically thinks where this is actually set a little bit higher than in quality. Uh, so if you even set it to quality or balanced, you'll get better experience on this. Uh, but anyway, so we got 43.2 FPS average, a 33.1% low and a 25.8.1% low on auto settings with no Lumen. Uh, going over to Lumen Nanite, uh, Lumen and GI and Nanite turned on, we got a 24.4 FPS average, 14.81% low, and 11.8.1% low. And then moving on over to the next one, we were testing just 1080p versus 720p, and this was with the Nanite and Lumen GI turned on. So at 720p, we got a 48 FPS average, 32.61% low, 17.5.1% low. Also, I switched over TSR to performance, sorry. Um, moving on to 1080p, seeing the difference here. So with uh, auto TSR, we gained from 24 and went up to 34.5 FPS average, 22.7, 1% low and a 7.5.1% low. So there was a sizable gain even just from switching over from TSR auto to performance. Now, moving on over to 720p auto settings, to TSR performance though, not auto, and then just switching with Nanite RT GI uh, on and off. So going over to GI and Nanite on, we got 48 FPS average, 32.61% low, 17.5.1% low. Very playable, like kind of 40 FPS experience. So if you want to play a 15 watt TDP and you want like a nice kind of like good eye candy experience, if you're kind of into that more than you care about the FPS average or whatever, uh, that's an option. And then turning that off, if you just care more about FPS and battery life with 720p, then you get a 71.6 uh, FPS average, 36.41% low and 18.1% low. Now moving on over to turning on turbo settings with auto settings, TSR performance, uh, Nanite with GI turning on and off. Uh, so th we got a 33.7 FPS average and a 3.21% low and a 1.6.1% low with Lumen GI and Nanite turned on at 1080p. And then we got a 57.8 average, a 25.31% low and a 2.7% point one percent low with lumen gi and nanite turned off auto settings again that's all high now moving over to 1080p uh turbo 15 watt mode all low so this is like your i guess pro level gamer move drop all the settings low get the highest fps in your multiplayer games so if doing that at 15 watts we got a 66.3 fps average a 48.8 one percent low and a 28.3.1 percent low and then turning on turbo, we got 97.1 FPS average, 74.8, 1% low, and a 40.1.1% low. And then these are kind of like my, I guess, recommended settings for a decent kind of looking experience if you want to have the GI and Nanite turned on. Um, if you don't really care about it, then it's still a good looking experience. So my settings are all medium and then 
texture high. So turn everything to high and then kick everything down to medium and then just kick up your textures to high. And then you can either have uh, GI RT on and then reflections off and nanite on as well. You have to have nanite on to have RTGI or reflections. Um, or you can turn just nanite on for the better kind of LOD and all that stuff. Uh, or you can have both of them off. I didn't test with just nanite. So what we got here was a 44.1 FPS average running 720p at 20.5 1% low and a 9.8.1% .1 low. And then running NADP RTGI nanite on, we get a 32.1 uh, FPS average, 13 1% low and 8.3.1% .1 low. So an okay like 30 FPS experience. So if you were getting similar performance to this in a different title, um, if the settings are as scalable as they are, uh, then yeah, you, you're likely still going to be able to kind of tweak the settings to get a playable experience in the future games. Uh, so now going to 720p even, and then uh, RTGI off, Nanite off, we got a 77.4 FPS average, 50.41% low, and a 32.1% low. Going 1080p, we got a 70.8 FPS average, 46.91% low, and a 24.5.1% low. Because the Ally has VRR and LFC, it feels okay to play most of the time. The sweet spot for it is like 40 to 70 FPS, but even if you're playing like 30 FPS, it still feels a lot better. Because it has variable refresh rate and low frame rate compensation, so when the FPS dips below the VRR range of 48 to 120 Hz, LFC, or low frame rate compensation, kicks in and frames are doubled. For example, when running at 40 FPS, frames are doubled and you are running at an effective 80 Hz. It's not like DLSS 3 though, and you get 80 FPS in game. It just helps to remove motion judder. Again, my best example is to play a game on your ally directly, getting frame rates of 40 to 60 FPS, as most TVs will likely cap at 60 Hertz, and then play on the TV docked. The image should appear, uh, should appear to be a lot smoother or less kind of juddery than on the TV. But in conclusion, with the added ben uh, bonus of having VR and LFC, playing on the ROG Ally will be a pleasant experience even with these fluctuating frame rates. Whether or not the Ally is future proof, at least in the terms of Unreal Engine 5 and advanced ray tracing features, uh, albeit software, the Ally does offer solid performance. Again, with the added benefit of having being able to scale your TDP range accordingly to play harder to run games. However, everyone switching to Unreal Engine 5 shouldn't be the cause for concern in the game industry that it has been. Instead, we should be more focused on which developers are using it, and if they have any given track record of optimization for PC games in the past. Capcom comes to mind quite often, as as of late they've been on fire with like just their PC ports. Um, aside from the fact of like the low VRAM crashing in Resident Evil 4, their PC ports are pretty dang solid and performance is pretty good across the board. But enough about that. Um, the other key component though is to ensure that the game's graphical options are scalable to a wide range of hardware. So for instance, Fortnite, you can scale it from DirectX 11 all the way up to DirectX 12 whatever with ray tracing turned on. You can have DLSS if you're on Nvidia. Like they've got all the bells and whistles and if you crank up the settings, it does turn into a very, very pretty looking game for its art style. Like I'm not saying it's gonna blow your doors off realism, but for the art style, it's pretty darn pretty when you have all the settings cranked up. But you can scale it back down. Like it runs on the Nintendo Switch still. It runs on most people's phones. So as long as the developers are going to give scalable options, we should be okay. Um, I know that not every game will look or run like Fortnite, um, <laughs> but more demanding Unreal Engine 5 games will be coming out. Layers of Fear Remastered just came out as well. I'll check that out uh, soon-ish, hopefully. Um, but at the end of the day, if the developers don't put the time and care into their PC versions without even focusing specifically just on handhelds, then the game was doomed from the start, in my opinion. But what do I know? Um, at the end of the day, hopefully you guys have a great day. Um, if you're viewing this before Monday, uh, just to let you know, uh, because of the influx of subscribers, I have decided to just, yeah, go ahead, screw it, do the full uh, two full price base value game giveaway. So if you're 
hearing this, then yeah, I guess I guess you're in the know. If you just kind of skip past or dropped a comment, then I guess you'll be surprised on Monday when I give out two. I don't know. <laughs> um, but anyway, always rambling on. Um, anyway, have a good day. Have a good, great weekend. Uh, good luck in the giveaway. And uh, we'll do the draw Monday.